my name is John Pike, and welcome. I'd like to introduce you uh, to a very progressive visionary leader in the real estate industry, and he lives in Michigan. His name is Kevin Yoder. And Kevin and I have had the privilege of working together, just as I mentioned, for a short period of time. And really what we're going to do today is get some of the reflections and input from him in terms of what his experience has been and how that could possibly help you. Cool. So and everyone, my name is Frank Klesitz. I'm just kind of here to moderate to kind of ask more additional questions to help you. So Kevin, uh, why don't you just tell us a little more about yourself and how you got to where you're at in real estate? Absolutely. I've been in real estate since 2002, so we're, I can't believe I'm saying this, it's been 12 years already. Uh, I was a solo agent for about, you know, nine, ten years of that journey, you know, about nine years. And right around 2010 and 11, I decided to start a team. And from that point, we, you know, this typical ceiling of achievement stuff, you can only do so much on your own. So I started the team in 2010 and a half, 2011. And from that point, I've doubled my business uh, year after year up until last year. And uh, with all that growth uh, came the need to get real clear on um, on hiring the right people. And we've had some stumbles across <laughs> across that plane, and uh, which is kind of what led me to John. And um, the need to actually make sure this, this year we're actually hiring talent and not just filling a, a void um, temporarily. So how many deals did you do last year, Kevin? Last year we sold 160 units. That's great. And can you explain maybe the makeup of your team from last year? Sure. So last year we had, we're really following along the lines of, of the showing assistant model, which is really have, hiring a high D personality buyer specialist and then having one or two buyer specialists leverage through showing specialists. And we are still following that model. So basically one or two buyer specialists, we had two showing specialists. Um, on the listing side, it was just me. And this is the part where I brought John on is to help me identify a, uh, a talented listing partner. So all of last year, it was I was the only one on the listing side. And of course, we had some admin. So it sounds like you're looking for a salesperson to replace you to do the listings then, right? Absolutely. Will they be prospecting to you to find seller leads? Uh, the, the, so far, the, the, the model does not allow for that or, or, or there's not a need for it. We really want to create a turn and burn opportunity for a listing partner, someone that just um, does in-office presentations and will use an inside salesperson to facilitate the prospecting part. So you said you had some challenges or failures or mistakes before. Can you tell me about those on hiring? and why that's been complicated or difficult for you? Yeah, you know, the, the well, at first it was just not knowing, and then it was knowing a little bit, you know, as they call that, what, unconscious, competent, you know, as you go along those stages, but um, as I began to learn about hiring and following the Keller Williams, I'm sure there's going to be some people from the Keller Williams um, organization and, you know, listening to this maybe, and um, following what's called the Recruit Select process, and it's a lengthy process. It takes, you know, it's taking me anywhere from, you um, you know, two weeks to six weeks to, uh, to identify talent. And then at the end of it, what I was challenged with the most is then we'd run um, the final profile, which would then uh, tell us if the talent, if this person is, is, is a match for the position. And I was getting a lot of mismatches at the end after spending hours and hours, uh, you know, going through the references, calling all the references back, you know, doing all the proper steps. So um, that was that, that's been a frustrating angle on that. So what do you mean? You, you get you go through the whole process of the recruit select process, but at the very end, you'd realize the person wasn't a fit. Yeah, that's pretty much where it came down to. You you know the 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 ABA is what it's called. You you administer that not at the beginning, but somewhere in the you know middle to two thirds of towards the end of the process. So you'd go through and you get your refer you'd call the references, and this would take hours. This is not something that just takes a couple hours. You'd have to spend I would spend sometimes upwards of two weeks because you're not getting calls back from the references and you're playing phone tag and of course I've got a business to run so I'm not a HR department and nor do I want to be one. And so by the time you get all that back and you're ready to administer the ABA to find out that it's a mismatch, and it's it's sort of counter to the to the disc and for some reason uh, we had it happen several times. So why did you hire John? I hired John because I had gotten to a place in my business where I had to make a decision and I had seen his name pop up not once, not twice, not three times but probably more like ten times and after that you start to pay attention and they were all positive reviews um, and, and I, I was at a place in my business where not only was I down to one admin um, due to 
um, just a series of mishires, and we did, I think I got to this place where I had to take massive action, and I reached out to him because I had heard so many good things about what he can do. I wanted to find out for myself, so uh, that's why uh, I recognized that by hiring John, he would give me the insight I needed to to shorten up that hiring process and have something not be a three-week or a month-long or a five-week process, but something that I can figure out, is this person talented? If so, let's jump right through the interview process and get to, to the heart of what matters most. Talent matters most first. Secondly, is is company culture and, and match, right? So you have someone right now that you're onboarding that's basically been hired to start doing the listing presentations for you. Is that correct? No, what where I am with that is I've already hired uh, I've already hired a um, a marketing person as a result of this process working with John. And this is in a a very short period of time, three weeks. Uh, the second person is an executive assistant who I'm uh, meeting with for the second time tomorrow, and I'm going to give her an offer. And then the third person is that listing partner, which I uh, wow, so um, we've, I've already. Yeah, yeah, right. In a three-week period, not too bad, right? That's not bad at all. And it, they're all needed. So the the listing partner, I am giving her an offer tomorrow. We've we've verbally agreed to uh, to commit to one another, and I was able to accomplish that in about a ten-day span. So John, from beginning to end. So John, tell me about like how was this? How was Kevin maybe going about the mistakes beforehand? What were some of the mistakes that you saw he was making that you kind of changed the hiring to get find the right people on the bus? Well, one of the most important is the concept of casting the largest net possible and have as many people profiled as possible and to do it the very first thing right out of the gate. So he doesn't want to spend all that time checking references and doing things until he knows, first of all, that he has an A player, a superstar. And so I think, Kevin, you know, you gave me the feedback that um, you were able to identify somebody within three days, that marketing person, and it was somebody that you probably would have dismissed and not even met with. And see, that's the problem is that resumes and an interview can lead you astray because you don't know enough about that person. Those two vehicles are fatally flawed. About 90% or more of, of the true person is hidden to our eyes in terms of when we're, when we're actually interviewing. So what the assessment does is it helps to give you significant insight and comprehensive data or optics into a person's capability to perform, whether or not they have the right personality is important, but it's only one small picture or piece of the puzzle. So if people out there are just merely using a disk profile, you're going to continue to get burned because things like persistence, handling rejection, um, being able to problem solve, enjoyment of the job, and a whole host of about 70 other factors that are crucial to performance are not being able to get measured. So these are the things, Kevin, I guess you weren't picking up in the disc assessment. So when you had your applicants come in, I'm sure you were throwing them a disc from like Tony Robbins' website or something, right? That's exactly what I was using. They, before they'd come in, they would have already completed the disc, um, thereby jumping through that one hoop, which we thought, okay, great, at least they're lined up in the disc area. But come to find out, in fact, they weren't a match. Well, so like, well, let's talk about that. Like, What type of match do you want for, let's say, let's talk about your marketing manager. I mean, in your head, what type of a disc were you looking for in your marketing manager, Kevin? Well, for a marketing manager, there, there wasn't quite as, as cut and dry. I didn't have that, 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 you know, like, for example, for an admin, you know, you're looking for that high, that high SC. And, and I guess you're going to want to see a little bit of that with a marketing person with, with a little bit of a, of a, um, a creative flair. So maybe, maybe the eye would be a little bit higher than you would for an admin. You know, you'd maybe have a midline eye and then a high SC. Uh, therefore, the, the detail orientation was there. Because it's a marketing person slash listing coordinator, this is someone that is doing a lot of data entry. So they had better be able to, you know, dial into that and be comfortable with, the, with, with data and numbers. So that's where the C orientation would come from. So, um, you know, we knew enough with that. But what John gave us was the other side of the story. Because that, that can all be there. But, you know, are they, what, what about their propensity for uh, exactness? What about their 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 drive to be the best what about their their talent scale all these things that we had never had any insight into before and now suddenly my eyes are are wide open to this concept that some people are just clearly more talented than others hello right that's something i you know we just and now i know that that's just, just wonderful and are the, you and kidding the, me and the disc did not pick up if that person was more talented than the other person on the assessment right 
Absolutely not. You'd you'd have no idea. You know, you had no idea. You're just it, it all is this, everyone's the same on a disc. It doesn't it doesn't pick up on talent. So that's the biggest aha from this process is I can then have very clear optics before I go through any process of interviewing whether or not this person is talented, whether or not they care enough to what, what their drive factor. Um, it, you know, that's it. So John. Back to you, where did you find these people? Like, you talk more about the job postings and where you went to recruit these applicants with this wide net. Well, first of all, for all those listening, a very good resource is ziprecruiter.com. The first time you use them as a, um, and test drive their capabilities, it's free. And what it does, it basically, like another, an, an, uh, you know, some other job boards, it, it actually distributes the, the ad to about 80 different sites. So it gives you maximum visibility, maximum exposure. So a lot of the brokers have been just using merely Craigslist. Well, that's a very narrow uh, segment. Uh, only people that are really looking and utilizing Craigslist are going to see the ad. Well, you want a lot more people to see the ad. So some of the folks that are working with me have already used 80 assessments in about a, in a three months uh, time frame, and that's what we want. We want the most amount of people to apply. So again, that we can get the best people. So ZipRecruiter.com. I mean, I mean, does it, do they charge you per site to put the post on? I mean, how much, how much is it going to cost if I want to post this to 80 separate job applicant websites? Well, the good news is they do all the work for you. I'm not exactly sure what they what they charge after the one that you do that's free. But what's great is you get to test drive it first before you actually purchase. And then let's talk about the ad. I mean, you probably have a lot of experience in writing ads. Let's talk about maybe hiring a sales type of a person, right? So you want to attract a salesperson for the applicant and replace you, Kevin, as your listing specialist, right? Right. Can you give me a rough overview of what you would say in this ad? How long is it what you put in it, roughly? Oh, well, I'm, I'm sorry. How long is the commit for the ad? No, no, no. Like, not the commitment, but, like, what do you say in an ad? What's a, oh, I'm sorry. Like, yeah, I got you. The general well, format or some key things you should put in an ad when you're looking to attract sales talent. Sure. It's a great question. Uh, and this is sometimes another part where brokers have a challenge because they're not using the right type of descriptive words that really are aligned with the type of talent and people that they're really looking to attract. So it would, it would sound something like this, you know, progressive, outgoing, persuasive, results-oriented sales leaders. Uh, we, you know, we have a successful company with a unique selling proposition and uh, where there is no ceiling on your income. Please forward your resume to the following address. That's we it. look forward you know, to hearing from you. It's pretty simple. It's like one paragraph? Yeah, it's very short. Now, based on, you know, I have lengthened it with some people because uh, to make it even more compelling, just based on several nuances of, of their market, um, some of the people are involved in the rate group, which is a very powerful a differentiator in terms of if they don't sell your home, they'll buy it from you, mm -hmm. which is a huge marketing and a compelling message. So, I mean, I know that would get my attention if I was looking to uh, to work for a sales organization that had that level of confidence in their ability. So you're posting the so the posting goes out to all these different sites. Says so you're looking for a salesperson. The lead comes in. You send them to some much more very involved assessment. It sounds like where you can really get to know, like, identifying talent through an assessment to some level. That's right. right. And then, you know, Kevin, when did you start talking to the applicants of finding out if they're a good fit for you, and then how did you determine that through your interviewing? Got it. Great question. You know, I, I, I actually already had my ads written. Um, I had researched and, and just delved into the best, best online that I could find. Uh, I was looking primarily for an inside salesperson, and then I was looking for a listing partner, but I use a website called gethire.com, and that also syndicates. But in my ad, what I have is I, I describe the position, and then I also require that they follow the steps that I've outlined within the ad. And for a sales position, I have them call a number and do a mock sales call. So for example, as I said in the ad, I am, I am a home seller. My home was on the market for six months. I'm frustrated. My name is John, and I have this following address, 123 Main Street, and you're tasked with calling me and then, of course, telling me about the Yoder Team's systems and why I should <laughs> list my home with you. And this is, and the, I, and this I went is, on to this say, is in the ad. 
This is in the air. And then they're calling. And then, yeah, and yeah, they're, 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 yeah. I recorded line. Like a, they're call no, I, I have it set up with a Google a Google number which goes right to my mobile. So what I do though is I see the call coming through. I'm not answering the phone. I'm letting it go to voicemail because I said in the ad, I said if 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 you are so inclined, if you would normally leave a voicemail and trying to get you know someone to list your home with you, then then please do so. I'm I'm not telling them to do so. I'm saying if this is something that one would do in the in the effort of trying to you know get a listing, then. Then, then leave a message. Now, I also gave them two important links. I gave them the link to my website, which explains how we're helping sellers in the expired uh, sale arena, and also I gave them a link to, I think it's a wiki site, which actually explains where the expired listing is. Okay. So I'm giving them the ammunition they need. I've given them a phone number, and basically I get, let's say, out of five people, uh, two will get it, not a probably 10, two will get it, and the remaining eight will actually call and leave one message and never call me again. I don't call those people back. It's the ones that have hounded me. They call me once in the morning, one in the afternoon, once the next day. And after they do that like maybe seven or eight times, I finally pick up the phone and call them back and say, okay, you got through the first hurdle. Well, let's talk. And, then and then that's the point where I get... Them, what, can you maybe go through some questions that you ask when you talk to them? Or? Sure. Well, yeah. If I, if I get them live, what I do is I is I actually launch right into a, um, a scripts and dialogues situation where I just call them back. I say, hi, this is John. You call about my expired home. How can I help you? And just let them roll, right? Let them, let them, I'm, I'm, this is a sales call. Just, we're, we're just are, having a dialogue like here. You're licensed people that are doing this and trying to figure yes, it out. Yes, absolutely. Yes, and you, and they are, yeah, so they're, that, that's the process. If I got their voicemail, this last one that I'm, I'm looking to hire tomorrow, I simply just said, hey, uh, you know, Leah, thanks for calling. This is John. You called about my home that was listed. It's no longer on the market. If you could please just send me an email with your information, that will allow me to really help understand if, if, I'm, if you're someone I should talk to or not. Again, I wasn't breaking role here. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted two reasons. One is I wanted to see how she would write to me in, in order, you know, in trying to convince me to use her services. And I also wanted to capture her email so I could get to her the profile link that, that we would send, you know, that would Absolutely. get the, get John involved, right? So it served two purposes. She wrote back and she actually wrote a very compelling email as to why we should hire the Yoder team. And secondly, I got her email address, which I sent her the profile, which she, then, of course, John got involved. So we have about th two or three minutes left here. Um, one, John, is there any other questions that maybe you can share with people of what they should ask on that first phone call? Uh, maybe when they're first discovering someone, if they want to take an appointment, or maybe at the interview, maybe key questions to listen for specific to a, or key questions to ask and what to listen for specific to a salesperson. I like to ask point blank, come hit right to the chase and say, why is it that I should hire you above everybody else that's out there for me to consider? And then just, just be quiet. And if they can, in a concise and a very compelling way, talk about what they bring to the table and how it's going to be of an advantage to you with them working there, then that's going to be a red flag. Okay. Well, that's definitely one. So, 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 Kevin, you hired John to kind of help you with this process. Can you maybe explain more what John did for you to help you out with finding these three talented people in a matter of, what, 10 days? Yeah, I mean... Well, I think what John, the, the best thing he did for me is being able to identify, because I have, you know, there's plenty of applicants. That wasn't the problem. You know, you, we cast out the big net. We used the website syndication. He also gave me the idea of using ZipRecruiter, which we just hadn't tried yet, but we had plenty of applicants. What, I, what he allowed me to do is to jump in with both feet 100% and just fire away. Get those, pro, get those email addresses, get those profiles emailed out to the candidates, um, unabashedly, you know, just saying, here, just take these because the answers are going to come rolling in. Whereas before, I always was reluctant because the more candidates I, I talked to, the more time I'd have to spend in the, recur in the hiring process. This let me just say 100%, let's just funnel them all through because the talent will be revealed <laughs> in the process, which, which bless you, John, which, which saves me hours. I mean, it saves me, I can't even tell you, it's probably saved me five days worth of worth of uh, recruiting efforts just having that, that having this process in place. Great. And to me, that's worth its weight in gold. Okay. Any other tips you can share about anyone else looking to hire talent that maybe you learned through this process, Kevin, for another agent that's looking for somebody that maybe you could share? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I would say for the first thing is is do create the website, the the, the capturing system, the the big net, as John said. You know, get that out there. Don't use Craigslist. You're going to be dealing with a a certain level of talent. Not to say you, you can't find talent through that, but you you have to expand it. That's just the one cog on the wheel. By using and once hired, you have that, get hired or zip recruit. Yeah. Or yeah, yeah, use yeah, but those you know, like for example, get hired. Will uh, one of the options is to post the ad on Craigslist, but within the ad, it actually links back to the get hired site. So if I have attracted somebody to get hired through Craigslist, they're still going to have to jump through those same hoops. They're still going to have to pick up the phone and have a mock sales call with me, which is no it fun, right? Like so it sounds like it's one central yeah. ad, and then it posts little hooks on all these different sites. Yes, and back to this one opt-in yeah. opt where they register exactly. for more information on the job. That's what it sounds like. Got it. Yeah, that, that's exactly what it is. And so once you get and that, that that point was oh, I always did that well, but the, what I didn't do well was identify is is this candidate in front of me actually talented? I had no way of knowing until I brought them in, scheduled the interview, have multiple interviews, do the references and all that stuff. And the first thing John told me was that you know resumes are either grossly overstated or grossly understated based on their that candidate's um, uh, you know whether they've hired a professional or not. And I never thought of it that way. So the best I can tell somebody is get that website lined up. Use the right job description, as John mentioned. If you're trying to hire talent, use words that draw talent in that will be attractive to talent and scare everyone else away that's non-talent. And you've already kind of honed that in a little bit. And by the time they come to you, then you get the if, – if you, I would definitely consider hiring John because without John, I wouldn't have the other pieces of the puzzle here. And I would be spending weeks – rather than days to hire, you know. I think you know, when your back is against the wall and you don't have a choice but to bring in the big guns, which is what I did. And not everybody's gonna be in that case, in that situation. I, I happen to be, though. I was in that place where I needed help, and it's like saying, like, go to the source of who's gonna, you know, this is, uh, this is what he does. So Kevin, thanks, man. I appreciate your all your feedback and the knowledge you can share with us today. You know, John, we got about 30 seconds My left. Pleasure. Give me a quick overview of what you do and how could someone get in touch with you. What I do is I make hiring very simple. It's a statistically proven scientific process, so it works unlike anything else. So in Kevin's case, he, once he identified who he wanted to hire, basically he already had his job ad written. Um, I just let him know who he needs to fast track for an interview and who to pass on, and then he interviews those specific people. So what I know about people like Kevin is that they want to work on their business and not in their business. They don't want to be wearing the HR hat for a long period of time. This helps you to accelerate being able to capture the best talent so that you can hire the best people and it's scientifically proven which is why it works so well. Great. Well, thanks everyone and um, that was one of our great interviews. Hopefully we'll be doing a lot more. Kevin, thank you and John, thank you too. Absolutely. My pleasure.